Red Bull gives you wings. Guys, they have no ultis, okay? I'm not dead, okay? I'm not dead. That's it, that's it, that's it. I'm f***ing, I think. She has no blood by the way, this guy, yeah, yeah. We're not fighting, thing, guys. Look, 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 look. That's it, that's it, that's it. It's fine, it's fine. Let's try to... Look, Axel, look, Axel, as well. Look, Axel, look, Axel, if you can, no flash, no flash. Okay, go, go, go. I like it, I like it. Okay. Oh, guys, we need to... You're so shit. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we are mega shit. <laughs> and Offense. welcome back to the LEC. After what was the best mic check, I think, to pre-plan this interview. Marek, thank you so much for joining me. Congrats on taking this one. Any words on what we just saw right now? And listen uh, to you. Yeah, I mean, we need to improve uh, if we want to win more. So, yeah, that's it. I, I think focusing on improving is always good for teams. And I know that before this uh, series, you told me, maybe we got better, maybe we didn't, but we will see. In the end, I don't think it was as clean as you guys would have anticipated. But wh what is next? How do you make sure that you're going to have clean games moving on? Uh, I mean, I think it for sure was better than last week. Yeah. But I think it was, you know, pretty far from clean. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know, we just need to do better next week Tell or me on Monday. A bit more in game. What, what happens? When, when do you guys lose control? Because I know that Razork was talking about this in a video that we aired earlier today the fact that there's a lot of individual league really, really good players, but it's about the way you guys come together that makes it messy sometimes. Tell me about the lack of discipline for you guys. Uh, I mean, I think it just comes from us having pretty bad two weeks and it just kind of snowballs out of control. Uh, we had a pretty bad uh, practice and pretty bad series on stage. Uh, I think we are kind of picking it up now to where we were during the regular split, but we still have a long way to go. How difficult is it though to trust good practice? Because I hear so often that scrims don't go well, stage games go well, and vice versa. How do you make sure that a week of practice is actually translate to good results on stage? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Somehow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, because uh, Usually, like when you have really bad scrims, or for some teams, you can have bad scrims and then play well on stage. But uh, I think for us, if we have really bad week of scrims, we are also playing bad on stage. Okay. So that's that's it, yeah. <laughs> Trying to find the formula here. I will switch on the next series. We have the players getting ready behind us. Vitality versus Mad Lion Koi. I don't want to have a prediction for you. I want to have hot takes. What do you think we're going to see during this series? Uh, it's going to be a complete storm from Vitality. I mean, there's Storm nothing... from Vitality, yeah, that's, all that's right. It. We'll see about this. We're minutes away from the pre-match. We're going to run Karzi's mic check. Anything that you remember from Karzi and his com comments in a in Yeah, game. I mean, he's like, uh, if you go to the zoo, you know, you go to the, to the monkeys, it's like, sounds pretty much the same. <laughs> all right, well, let's find out now. Marek, thank you so much. Thank you. And let's listen to Karzi's mic check. Oh my god, I'm going to this f action. My clicks are just like if Gumayushi possessed me. Any flashes used? Mine. <laughs> Today when you guys start inting me, I will start screaming, let me perform. Let me perform! Yes, please don't scream, it hurts my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Ah, ears, ears, not eyes. <laughs> Can I get referee 0%? <laughs> bomba, bomba, bomba. <laughs> Give me the kills! <laughs> you f***ing rats. I'm doing Gangnam style. Stage one and old, stage one and old. They are I, I can beat, I can beat, I can beat. Yeah, yeah, Photon, calm down, please. F I have wrong roots. I have ghost clans. I have run <laughs> down. Peach is so cute, no? Yeah, Peach is so cute. Peach is very cute. <laughs> BDS! Can you One, two, three, BDS! Did you? I need you in lobby. Join the lobby, rat. I got possessed by NALCS Pro, so I'm gonna run it down. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, LEC is worse than NALCS. Oh, sh**. <laughs> nice, thank you guys. The macro was sh**, but at least we won. Do you guys hear me? Do you guys need any changes on the support row? Yeah. 
F3 bi kot join the team, would be nice. <laughs> wow, I mean, even if they're losing, it must be fun. What a legend. <laughs> what a legend. We knew this already, but it's really nice that production put that together. Uh, speaking of ADCs, we did have to crown the Kia player of the series of the last one. It was Noah, so hopefully Karzi can emulate that performance. And that actually gets us into this pregame for Mad Lions Koi versus Vitality seamlessly, because we wanted to talk about the bot laners, Karzi versus Supa. So who wants to kick us off? And why do we want to talk about them so badly, Finn? Yeah, I think Karzi is really good whenever he plays. Uh, his jinx, he gets pentakill. No, uh, <laughs> that's a really good Careful impression. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, no, uh, I think uh, it's the best Eddie Carey in the league versus the self proclaimed best Eddie Carey in the league, oh! which is very exciting oh, wow. to see. Oh um, my god, Karsi, of course, being the GOAT as he is, uh, I think he's had such a good spot already. Uh, been playing so much good stuff. Uh, look at this, look at this guy just walking up, killing this guy. No care in the world, boom, boom, boom. I mean, he uh, does have the Zillion here as well, but I think Kars as well, he's just such a complete AD carry as it is right now, because we see a lot of late game scaling coming through with Jinx and Seri, but he's not afraid to bust out the Sire too, where he also just, a lot of AD carries in our league right now, likes to kind of play on the edge in terms of what is a grief and what is the best play possible. But Kasi right now seems to be the AD carry that takes the best steps in this line. It felt like in the beginning when him and Huli started becoming a duo, the issue for them was the overaggression and not really knowing their the limits. But now that they've toned it down, really found each other, man, they're strong. Yeah, it feels like they've like postponed their they're inting to later in the game, but I mean, we can talk about that later. I mean, you do remember the good games, but they also yeah. had some stinkers. There yeah, was yeah. a Yasuo game in there somewhere oh, yeah. that we all forgot about. We're going to talk like about it Yasuo. as well. Like, we got we to be fair as well. We're like. gonna, we got to be fair. It's just that we only remember the throws. But I do want to talk about this guy as well, Supa. You know, you, Finn said, uh, self-proclaimed best ADC in the league. This is also something that we heard from Elyura. They're going to be the best bot lane, etc. But why do you think it has that ring to it? Because I mean, he's not right now, right? So how important is this going to be that he can show that he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Karzi? Yeah, what I really think Super needs to do well to really become up towards what he wants to be is really uh, define himself as one of the best late-game AD carries. Because right now, that's something that the entirety of MDK has struggled with. But if you look at his stats too, like he's a great early-game AD carry. He gets facilitated by his team. He is a win condition for his team too. But it's where they fall flat in the mid to late game that getting to that big step for being one of the best AD carries in the league is not there for him yet. It's also worth pointing out that, you know, them always throwing in the mid and late game isn't necessarily his fault because as an AD carry, there's a limit to how much control he has over yeah. the vision control and map movements. And I think usually when it comes to team fighting, he's always on point. Yeah, probably what we're going to see today as well. We have mentioned the word throw a lot, right? I think it's just because that Vitality BDS series for me from last week is stuck in my brain. Um, I know that Odea or uh, beautiful stats person said, well, actually they don't throw that much, but the thing is, you just have to do it once or twice in important games, and then that is following you. That's just the way it is, unfortunately, right? So. Goldberg, break it down for us. Yeah, I think for Vitality specifically, as you said yourself, right, we haven't seen the many throws, but when you throw in the m m moments that matter, those are going to be the throws that people will remember the most and the throws that's going to define you. In the game against BDS in their second game, they get caught on bot side with Photon, overcomplicates the play for themselves by starting up a Nash that they have no business really getting, give it to the enemy team, and one play that could have been, oh, our top laner got caught, suddenly turned into our co top laner got caught, we got aced and we lost the entire Baron. And it kind of happens as well in game three here. Yeah, I really feel like Vitality's big issue is that something goes wrong in the game and instead of just cutting the play, they just hard commit to what's going wrong here. Here, I think Photon messed up his combo a bit and then they're still all committed to the play even after the Malka is out. And then it turns into this like choke point fest where all the AOE is coming down from the way in the Seri and they just get lost in the translation here. But I think it's such a big contrast as to how Mad Lions loses their games as well in the late game because it's not necessarily a bad decision for them. In this scenario, they had Baron. They took tier two in mid lane, they took tier two in bot lane, and now it's just a bad reset. Great pink ward from Car or from Yike here rather, to stop the blast cone to come through from Super. But it's just reset timer, reset timers, reset timers. They're just sloppy again and again from MDK. It's not bad macro calls or anything like that. It's just the fact that they overstay a lot when reset has to come through and they don't do it as a five-man unit. It's also, I think we're frustrated because of the last series we saw. We really want to see the level will go up. I did hear that very definitively from Humanoid. Vitality is absolutely going to smurf on them. Uh, but Finn, this is exactly the position that Mad Lions Koi have been in the entire year. Yeah. They love being underestimated. Yeah. I, mean, I do think Vitality has the chance to lose. But um, I, I, need, I need to see more in draft from Mad Lions. I feel like I really want to see Mervyn more on these carry picks again because I feel like he's not had the same impact as he had in the winter. Okay. Any last thoughts before we get into it? 
Well, I'm mostly looking at top lane, like Finn said. Mirwin, can he actually match Photon, the current best top lane in the league? If he can get an advantage with some spicy picks, then they have a win con. Best AD in the league, best top in the league. What am I hearing? Why is Vitality now our number one team? I guess we'll find out. Let's head over to our casters. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Shoxam. Welcome back, of course, to the desk. Right where you belong in the heat of the moment here in this show, Vitality and MDK. I'm Asterix. This is Vedius. That was very dramatic. It was. <laughs> it was like a nice welcome back. Then I'm like, actually, I'm also really pumped. How can I transition? I think the biggest thing I want to take away is what they talked about in the top lane because the top lanes are fun. The top lanes. You do love top lanes. I'm not even a top laner. No, well, but you, uh, you talk about the shy a lot. I do. So you, you walk me into that. <laughs> I've left that behind. The legacy's just there. I never bring it uh -huh, up. But uh -huh. when you're talking about Mirwin versus Photon, some part of me comes back to how strong top can be. And I'm not just talking about a Korean top in Photon who, yes, feels like he's the best top of the split. I feel like when you see Mirwin's champion pool, as they were saying that they want to see more of, you naturally go to the point of like, hey, how carry can these top laners be in the matchup? I mean, frankly, my biggest opinion on both these teams all comes down to discipline. I think that throughout the year, discipline has been a bit been a big struggle for yep. both of these teams because we've seen them find these huge advantages before and it's all about converting those advantages into one games. This is going to be our last opportunity until summer. This is an elimination. Best of three. That's it. Mad Lions have made the lower bracket run before. It was this matchup that ended Vitality's run in winter, whereas Mad Lions Koi made it all the way to the finals to face up against G2 and it was GB that ran it through his four at the beginning of the day. If Vitality want to make it to MSI, they have to win this play. Yep. They don't have enough points. It's not possible for them based on their winter performance because they were knocked out as early as they were. So they have to win the whole thing if they want a chance to compete internationally. For Mad Lions, Koi, they just have to make it to the finals. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be an easy road to get there. No way. I mean, they still got Fnatic in the way, as we just saw from the 2-1 over Heretics. History could repeat itself, but it has to start here in this BO3. Remember, 14-6. Nothing taken away the Azir re-enabled if you haven't been watching our playoffs and especially when you're watching playoffs and looking at this top lane, we can start with the rumble point. Photon losing that carry is a big deal considering that Vitality have looked to him on it a couple of times so far this split. He got it one game in playoffs and since then it's just been, he lost that game. He did still and lose everyone it. still said, nope, 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 not going to give him that champion Risky. ever again too much of a risk. Now, between both these AD carries, Zeri has been a very valuable pick, in particular for Super, but Zaya has also risen in priority for both of these players. Meanwhile, Rel still up and available, not been a massive priority for both of these teams, but we know that if they can get their hands on it, it's a super strong flex pick, and why wouldn't you want to try and get it for yourself? So, gonna lock that one in, but now I'm curious as to where this Zaya falls in the priority Dead, scale. Yeah. Things like the Zeri taken away already. I'm glad you mentioned that. Jinx, another one we've seen here in the LEC, start to be a mainstay. Kaiser also on the back of our minds as well. Let's see, both these AD carries have wide champion pools. We've already seen the Siva out of Super in playoffs. We've seen the Yasuo, the Ezreal out of Kazi already. But while we dilly dally over AD carries, the Zaya ends up getting taken away by Mad Lions Koi. And importantly, I think this Azir, which has been such a great playmaking tool in the LEC playoffs, is taken by Mad Lions Koi first as well. Curious is what the answer is going to be from Vito. Is he interested in the Talia? We know the Twisted Fate is something that Photon loves to get his hands on. Yep. We've been seeing it globally have huge impact. Admittedly, there are answers to it, things like the Jax, but the thing you've got to be scary of with Vitality in particular is they flux it into AD Carry as well. So even if you now pick something like the Jax, you can't be sure that you're going to get that matchup into the TM. Very good point, especially when cards have been popping off too. Like being my top AD Carry for the split amongst Photon showcasing his legacy up top as well. So while we question that Twisted Fate, the Rakan is taken away from Mad Lion's Koi. No Lover's Duo in the bottom side, but for Alvaro, does he go for a Hook Champion? No. Disables that and says, I'm going to be part of the Engage solution for Mad Lion's Koi in this game one. Gives them a bit of flexibility in the jungle as well. Alistair definitely had some hit or miss performances here in the LEC, but we think back to Alvaro, regarded as one of, if not the best performing support from Winter. Yep. I know the All Pro did end up going in Mickey's favor, but it's hard to diminish what Alvaro was able to do. While his impact hasn't been as strong so far this split, you can never afford to underestimate what he's capable of on the engaged champions. Now, with Jinx being taken away, obviously Mad Lion's Koi is aware of the fact that this Twisted Fate could still go in the AD carry position, yep. but they're playing around the fact that Kazi, he does 
does, he is willing to play those long range hyperscalers. And in Desire, you're very limited in terms of what options you can go for when you've already locked in your Rakan. Especially when Mad Lion's Koya is saying, well, we respect Kazi. We're going to take off as many options as possible. With the Zerion team vitality taken away, with also the Yasuo counting as bot laner here in this example. Jax is probably the next ban as well. Well, I mean, you'd think so in the solo lanes, right? I was just going to say, Mad Lion's Koya really making sure that Kazi's pool is so damn limited with the Kalista following through. Oh. But the Ivan. Instead, that Jack's now still being open. I wonder if this is something Mirwin wants to go for. Of course, we know mid, we know bot lane, jungle is the likely pick next. Vi being taken away. What are we looking at here for Mad Lions Core? I was gonna say Sejuani or maybe a bit of a duelist. Yep. And Zia Viego wouldn't make a huge amount of sense. North turn, we've been seeing a bunch okay. over in the LPL and the LCK. Yep. Uh, a powerful dive tool when paired up with an Alistair, I think. I like those in combination with each other. Ideally, I'd love to see the top laner as well for kind of be a champion that can help facilitate this. Something like an Aatrox could potentially be good, but picking Aatrox into TF is not going to be a fun matchup. We see a cheeky hover of the Smolder. I wonder if Kaz is just teasing us or if he still thinks it can be a viable pick. Ezreal Instead, now. he's going for the Ezreal. Of course, this is a champion completely forgot about, but it is a Kazi special. He's one of the few AD carries in Europe that has consistently found success on the champion, loves to bring it out, and we're going to get a Silas from VTO. We think to him as a player, Individual playmaking is what he's known best for, and this is a champion that he absolutely loves to play. And especially when there's Alistar on the other team, that's huge. As Ari does get locked in, Ari top. We is it Ari top or Azir top? Well, that's a good question. I mean, Ari top with AD was a thing building up to the start of this year. It's true. And I'm not sure if we actually ended up getting it at all. But uh, no, I don't think I we mean, did. I mean, Mirwin is the guy that cooks. This is the guy he that is honestly, the guy that cooks. I'm pretty sure either Gordon Ramsay cousin, family member, or something. Because Mirwin honestly has once again jumped into the kitchen with his seventh unique, no, sorry, sixth unique pick in playoffs alone. You want to see carry on the top lane? I guess this still gives it to you. I mean, I'm excited to see, and it looks like it's going to be locked in. The Ari top lane on hit Ari is what we are expecting for Mirwin. Yeah. On hit Twisted Fate versus on hit Ari going up against each other in the top lane. What year is it? An incredibly volatile top lane, but two very powerful side lane threats. You think about how Twisted Fate in the late game becomes this menace that's very hard to deal with, especially because his ultimate allows him to join fights in the mid lane. True. But now they can also look to attack the mid lane by leveraging the fact that they do have both an Azia and an Ari at their disposal that can be side lane threats and great for creating capital, uh, great for creating picks and um, capitalizing on the mistakes of their opponent. Super interesting drafts from both sides. I'm excited to see how this plays out. You and I both, especially since it's a rematch of winter. Mad made the miracle run all the way to finals. It started here. Well, starting against Giant X is one thing, but starting against Vitality was a huge boon to get them right into Fnatic, then beating Fnatic, then beating BDS, and getting up to G2, even taking a game off them in the finals. We start with a pause. Is that a sign of good things to come? I'm not sure. Fnatic aren't here, so I'm not sure who did the pause, so we'll wait and see. But Vitality on the other end, they were the ones knocked out in winter. That's why we said they have to get through. As you said, Betis have to be champions. I mean, it's a big ask. It's yeah. a big ask for Vitality. It certainly is. I mean, um, basically, qualifying for MSI, it's... I don't know if I want to say it's harder, but obviously you get more points in spring than you do in winter. So if you had a good winter, but then a not so good spring, you can't just rely it, on points, you know what I mean? Your which is a great, a great system. Carry. I have to commend the system. That's yeah. Uh, so this time, you basically have to be top three. Yep. Uh, especially with the way that things have played up, because it's so similar to our previous bracket. It's like almost know? identical. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's literally almost identical, right? Yeah. So um, right now, in terms of if G2 win the split, the contenders are BDS, right? They're the like leading points runner, and depending on who makes their way through, all sorts of interesting things can happen. Um, as but we said, Mad as well, obviously, would be contenders if they make it to the Grand Finals. Yeah, if they themselves. make it to the Grand Finals, they put themselves in an excellent points position. Uh, I'm sure Goldborg will keep us updated throughout the weekend as placements continue to oh, happen. He's the guy now, is he? He's the guy now. He's the guy. I've appointed him as the guy, oh. so I'm sure that he'll keep us regularly updated. I'm what, sure he's wait, super so excited about this. You've appointed him as the guy. He's the guy. So you're the guy who's made him the guy. I'm the guy that made him the guy. What does that make you? The guy's guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I, Ladies and gentlemen, I guess. Medias. I guess. Okay. Yeah. 
the guy's guy. Wow. I feel like that you've created this as something important, and I don't understand how it is. It is important. It's important to me and uh, anyone else who kind of followed the ramblings of what we just talked about for the understood. last two minutes. Got it. You know, the crowd shooting in, they're like, they heard ranting, and now they hear that Vettius is the guy's guy. And everyone's well, now, wondering, while, like, what's happening? Well, Hysterics is figuring that conundrum out. Um, <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm, I'm not I want to remind everyone that we do have G2 versus BDS best of five tomorrow, and then oh, the yeah. day after will be Fnatic versus the winner of this series yep. on Monday, leading into our finals weekend next week um, to round out spring and set us up for MSI. The ready checks have come through. Yep. The players are back out onto the ref, so we're going to be jumping back into the game momentarily. In what is a remake of, you know, again, France versus Spain. I just like to throw the regional rivalries out there. People only think of it as Mad Koi versus KC, but of course, when you have Vitality versus Mad, the same applies, doesn't it? As Vitality look to make a better run, we already set it up, and starting off here with the Silas pick against Alistar, and the deep invade from Vitality looking for blood. Healy on the Rakan as well, a playmaker while Mirwin is not going to get spotted out. They're looking for the pick. Video then spotted out by Mirwin, and a bit of damage done. Now, we talked about on hit to Ari. Oh, yeah. However, he's running Electrocute. He is. He's starting with Doran's ring. And I had a quick look at his profile, and he has 27 AP. Um, obviously, you don't get armor runes anymore, but like, it, I don't see any AD in his kit. Okay. Now, and, and Electrocute is not normally something that you'd run with on-hit builds. Usually, you'd have things like Press the Attack, Lethal Tempo, Fleet Footwork. One of these is an option. Um, so he may well just be going AP. Yeah. But we'll wait. I'll hold my reservations. I will admit that I am very inexperienced in the ventures of RE top lane. So perhaps I'm just not familiar with the tech. You know, I'll wait and see. Uh, we'll see what Moen does as uh, he's playing against Photon's TF in the top lane. And like Photon is obviously a player that has been held in high regards. Yep. Regardless of Vitality's performance, it feels like that this man is one of the best performing top laners. I love how many people are touting him as the best when Broken Blade is still sitting in the upper bracket, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's um, also true, right? But uh, if we do get the opportunity to see them play against each other, we can finally have that debate put to bed, right? Well, yeah. Uh, in any case, expectations will be high on his shoulders to have impact on the sidelines and looking for pick opportunities. But we kind of look at these comps, there's a lot of skirmishing potential, especially when you look at champions like Silas, a champion that once he gets a few levels under his belt, the cooldown starts to come through on his abilities. Yep. He just loves to get into the thick of things and go for those 2v2s, 3v3s. Obviously in team fights, such a great value into Alistair specifically yeah. because you get the addition of that ultimate and now you have all that durability sustaining damage and it makes it very difficult for AD carries to deal with you. I will say the only thing that confuses me a little bit about Empty Gaze comp is when you think about Azia and Zaya, they love champions that come into you, that yeah. try and close that gap. Whereas you've got Nocturne, Ari, and Alistar all diving forward. So you've kind of got two different things that want to do slightly different things. In terms of the team fight, V2 is going to be looking for ways to find access onto the backline. Obviously, Douglas has a great engage tool along with Hilly, but they've also got range options in the form of the Ezreal and the Twisted Fate. Ultimately, Vitality have a very well-rounded 1-3-1 one, one comp yep. that gives you a lot of opportunities to find picks and, and catch your opposition. But at the same time, MDK have a lot of ways to respond to that, thanks to the Nocturne ultimate Ooh. and the fact that they have multiple sideline threats. King Slayer, they're shifting sands from Frescao, a bit of auto damage. Video's going to be okay. Further to your point, we already talked about it. Once those six, six level sixes come online, the vitality, let the games begin. Honestly, we're going to expect shifting sands, or rather, Emperor's shuffle druffle. It's not a word, but Video's going to use it anyway. Both junglers have kind of avoided each other here. They're both setting up for a gank in mid, but they don't know that the other jungle is here. Frescao, he's got no mana. Abscond of Duck, he might have to flash, but Electric won't let him out. Normal Daglas, first blood there while Elioria tries to run on in onto Daglas now. He shifts his attention. He's got Conqueror here, so staying in combat feels good, but Daglas is out with a crash down himself, and first blood over to the jungler is just what the doctor ordered for Vitality. Daglas is the one that moves first, and he makes it work. Secures himself first blood. El Yoya looking for a cheeky steal on the Raptors. Decides not to overstay. The good news for MDK is that mid wave is in a great spot for Frescawi. Yep. A terrible spot for Vitio. It was pushing towards Frescawi and they didn't get an opportunity to fix the wave thanks to El Yoya's presence. Which means that Vitio, while he will be able to TP back into the lane, it's a bit awkward. But we look back, both junglers setting up for the play. Nice chains connect from Vitio. The flash chain CC from Daglas means that Frescawi just doesn't get an opportunity to respond. And he ends up losing first blood. Now first blood does go over to Rel, but still, uh, feels like it alleviated something as we were talking about the wave and the dangers there, but Video's able to push up after TPing back. Well, in the 2v2 and bot side, hang on, Hilly jumps in, gets ignited on the way up by Alvaro. 
super close to getting that root in, but he's also low on mana. So nothing to be done more in the 2v2, while Video now thinks about roaming to the bottom side with that massive mid wave we just saw pushed in. They still have all their summoner spells. MBK is suspicious of it. Knock up Healy doesn't find it, but Alvaro matches. Instead, he might die. But look at what they've used. Onto Alvaro next is Video. Without level six, though, he can't do too much more. Or maybe he can flash forward and Video autos for the kill. It's a trade in the end, but for Healy's life, you'll take that for vitality. Ends up being a one for one. Support traded for support. And Super, he looked at the health bars, looked at the mana, and thought about the idea of maybe I can still actually get another kill here. Yeah. But the moment that Douglas showed up, he's like, you know what? Nope, not worth the risk. Frescawi now desperately trying to push this wave underneath the tower, but Hilly's here to hold it. So nice lane assignments. VTO should be able to make his way back into mid, and he shouldn't lose too much farm. Ultimately, small advantage gained for Vitality. Video should be getting level six off here as well. El Yoya moving into position. Remember, his six is on the way. As he starts invading in the wolf camp, his timing is great here as Daglas is moving up to the top side of the map, trying to get a response, trying to read this. As Video finally clears out the wave, he's going to move with Daglas for the time being and just, just in case, El Yoya is a threat. They've swatted El Yoya in the jungle. He knows that he can't overstay here. He Both has to back six. off. Destiny coming through. Remember, El Yoya can't turn the lights off. As he brings his shield up, the gold card waited out of Skond of Duct. It's going to be blocked, though. In the meantime, the Ari and the Spirit Rush. He's great. Vitality getting low, but Frescavi running on in. Wait for the shuffle into melee range. Merwin's damage cannot be denied. And Frescavi doesn't even need the old Charm comes back in, though. Disrespect from Vitality. As Photon's going to get Beardy gold cards on the way out, but Video can't re-engage that. Vitality with a big misstep. And MDK are there to punish him up. So a lot of crucial things happened. The first one being VTO only just now ticks over to level six. Yep. The fact that Frescawi had that ultimate when VTO did not made that fight that much harder to actually play out. The second thing is that it was... <laughs> There's also a level discrepancy between the two junglers, which gives El Yoya the opportunity to just tank a little bit more. But also notice how they don't commit onto El Yoya here. Time is bought. Daglas is now committed to the fight, and remember that he used his flash in the mid play. Yeah. So there's no way that he can get out of this. The second Vitality realized that they can't win out on the 3v3. They're forced to disengage. That was just a matter of Vitality thought that they had caught El Yoya out, but because MDK collapsed with level advantages across the board, they're able to win out. So the kills now equalize 2-2, two to two, the gold largely dead even. And this is very much what I expected between Vitality and MBK, a brawl, a scrap, yep. a skirmish. These are two teams that we know love to fight. We know that they love to get in your face. They love to be proactive. The ultimate question is, who ends up winning in a situation well. like that? I mean, again, we've got proactive comps for our first game as well. And now that we're hitting level six consistently, we already saw a partial fight with Mirwin's ult use, Destiny used by Photon. But with those mid laners and now junglers joining with their level six as well, build that skirmishing up a little bit more. MDK were able to get a grub, by the way, so it's not a 3 0 start. Vitality, however, are able to get the smart in the last one, and Daglas opens up. But just quickly note El Yoya, second time in the enemy jungle of Daglas. And he's building up a bit of a CS lead here. He now has the Nocturne ulti as well. And around Vitality's bottom lane, I wonder what the setup is here for MDK I, now that it's up. I will say El Yoya, to me, is one of the best dirty game junglers we have in the league. Agreed. He's so good at executing on the plans that the team sets up. And he's really good at playing around the lanes that need to be played around. Uh, and when he's on a, a farming jungler like Nocturne, a champion that wants to get six as quickly as possible, he's just great at reading what the enemy jungler wants to do and then stealing away their camps and punishing them. The dragon has been started off. They want this. Level sixes have come through. He engages onto Hilly. He's not level six himself. But Video is looking for a hijack in the back line while Daglas gets in the Magnus Storm. Super ulti, though. Root out. Video re engages. The Shot of Duck is good for Fred Scowy. Only on a one man target. Video had stolen away the big mega cow ulti. And so Fred Scowy, as he runs through his life with the chain slash, forcing it out. There's the Emperor's Divide. Frescawi separates and creates his own moment as Abscondor Duck the second time won't connect. Crucially, this time round, Vitality had their ultimates online. Daglas was quick to find that engage onto the Nocturne. Vitio was there to follow. And you're seeing kind of how that composition works, right? With Daglas as the primary engage, and then Vitio being able to stand right next to him. He didn't use the Alistair ultimate this time round, but he had it as an option. Yeah. And MDK was immediately forced to retreat. Nice initial engage from Alvaro, but it doesn't convert into much, so he's forced to retreat. Ulti comes out early from Super. Nice pullback from the Feathers, but Daglas took little to no damage. And MDK is almost immediately onto the retreat. Ends up being a one-for-one -one in terms of kills. Good job on Frescawi finding something back, but... Actually, the Dragon didn't end up going down. I it thought Vitality converted at that, but uh, my mistake. Ends up just being a one-for-one -one in kills.
Don't do it again, Fedius. It's okay. <laughs> 2 0 mid laners, by the way, or 2 1 in the ECS case. Destiny going to be used topside by Photon. Keep track of that. Because remember, that dragon is still up. And although there's nothing topside, Photon doesn't have teleport. So he can't join any fight that erupts for a second time down in this bottom lane. But as I said, Vettius, we might not have first items. We do have strong mid lane in this video. Trying to show it. That Alistar ulti now going to be used. So Fresco will do no damage. Oh, yeah, it comes on in. But to much avail at this point. Daglas now nearby to counteract with Magnet Storm up and available already as a quick tangent. Well, video continues to try and control mid lane quite a bit. There's the ulti now flying through. The paranoia from Elio is going to result in a fear meal and with the charm as well. And video cannot move. Shut down over to El Yoya. And just like that, mad are continuing to rise. Nice collapse from MDK. They take advantage of the fact that Vito. He's winning out on the individual trades against Friskawi, so he steps up very far in the lane. A quick Nocturne ultimate to know that he can guarantee that fear connect. Mew in with a nice roam down as well. Means that MDK convert another kill. Gold remains dead even as Super now becomes the target. He's going to avoid that really nicely there from Hilly. Side steps, but Plate still goes down to Vitality 2v2. Super left alone for the time being. Alvaro now returning to lane. But with that kill, Mad edge ahead a little bit in gold. And it was the shutdown that was taken away from Video that went over to El Yoya that gets him close to that first item. But again, there's no major gold lead here in this game. It's only just small margins as the Dragon finally started for what seems like the third time to stun by Vitality. This should be an easy secure for Vitality. They know they have the push in bot. Nocturne will be setting a bit of vision invested around the map. That ward on the Wolves in particular should indicate that Aloya was top side of his jungle rather than clearing through bot. The reset should come through and he's likely to start pathing bot. But actually he recognizes the grubs are online. He knows that Daglas is on the bot side of the map and he's seeing if there's an opportunity to go for those right now. But Rel with the early reset means that Daglas should be in a position to contest. Great control ward by the way. Just passing through. I mean, El Yoyo are going to be tracked. And this is the thing as well, Vidius. I think I can talk to the Nocturne aficionado here. Even though you told me the other day it's not even your favourite champion not anymore. not my favourite champion. You feel he never was. That, oh, that is a, you sound kind of fraudulent. No, he wasn't. He was just a champion that I used to gain ELO because oh, he was broken. You used him. I did. <laughs> you, you, you. And I'm just saying, I got him into pro play. Okay, Pro well, should be grateful. Now, while Vidius' ego holds on for the time being, let's look at the play. Daklas misses the jump over the wall. Now might have to Magnet Storm out. He just gets hit with everything, though, and doesn't want to burn the ulti. Sits here, looks for the grub still, but in front of his own eyes, he dies while the grubs are taken from his hand. Four for MDK in the end. Means Vitality with their play are going to get punished once again. Well, clarify in the replay, but I think the fear actually interrupted. Well, but maybe he just face planted the oh, wall as flash. flash is forced out from Photon. Mewen is, in fact, going for the full AP top Ari. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paranoia comes through. Remember, he's got that spell shield for the gold card. He can hold on to it as the flea comes through as well. There's nothing this TF can do. Photon has to sit and watch him die as well. Another kill for El Yoya. Top's open. Vitality coming for the counter response, but Frescaui's here for the pinch. Look at their movement, trying to think that they can get in and slap him with the old surprise howdy doody. But MDK are backing each other up, and they are starting to take a significant goal lead here in this opening of game one. That they are. It all starts with the punish onto Daglas, knowing that they have numbers advantage in top. They all move together to threaten a dive onto Photon, and we'll look back at it now. Daglas trying to contest here, but this is a mistake on his part. He thinks that he has the support because Hilly's already here, but look at the collapse coming from Elder Game. Mirwin is first, Friskawi is first. He ends up connecting with the wall. The fear comes through afterwards, and uh, it ends up being a grub secure. And then the way in which Mirwin invests his ultimate to get the flash out from Photon then makes it easy for El Yoya to chase Nocturne is just a great dueling champion. Yep. He will want, win out 1v1 against most champs thanks to his spell shield and his fear. And so if you don't have flash, you're just, you're likely gonna die. So great stuff from MDK. Video of Scotland of Dark actually has to steal the Alistar ult. Alvaro might be in trouble himself, but holds onto his flash and ult. He then pulls it out. We're getting an all-in engage off the back of that. The Magnuson starts it off. The Destiny's coming in as well. The Video's low, Alvaro's low, Hilly's low. Look who else is low. It's Daglitz in the middle again, who gets taken out and fearing for his life. Now Kazi versus Mir when it's happening, but Kazi doing okay, waiting for the charm to come through, Orbit Deception and Spirit Rush, a Q and a shutdown. While meanwhile, Alvaro, that cow is free range, man. Someone reel him back in. This is exactly what we were expecting. Nothing but a brawl around the enemy red buff. It's a kill advantage for Vitality. MDK steal away the red buff. And what major objectives are secured? None, because they're just out for each other's yeah, throats. It's yeah. all about the brawl. It's all about the fight.
MDK hold on to about a 1.5, nearly 2k gold lead for now. Friskawi is the one securing these kills. 4 1 and 1 on the Azir. But Vitio not that far behind him as well. These two mid laners are going to be crucial as we get closer and closer to these bigger fights. And let's be real as well. I mean, seeing Friskawi doing well. Oh, that's throwing me back. That's throwing me back to their last series, especially. When already we've seen them go up against SK, when we've seen Vitality. As I need to pause, Alvaro might be engaged on here. Remember, his ulti was burned in the last fight, but uh, look at that cooldown. Three back up, so ignore the point. As he just gets tagged out, considering Herald's up here. That's why the attention of Vitality now shifts again. Photon being on the bot side of the map with Friskawi having TP gives MDK the ability to contest this. They're pushing in the mid wave for now. Photon is not going to arrive in time as Alvaro just goes for another poke, stalling, buying time. Paranoia taken away. Mirwin comes on in. But now here comes for Scowie. And so MDK have secured the numbers advantage. So yep. the best play Vitality can do now is try and trade that bot out of tower for this Herald. I say that, but MDK are completely disengaging. They've chosen not to overstay. Vitality can start this objective up oh, again. Lord. Paranoia stolen away. Remember again, Alvaro going to burn his ulti, but he's by himself. The poke from Kazi helps out as that is one tanky cow, but finally becomes poultry. Excuse me. Me again. That's definitely not right as Vitality now has Poultry are birds. Yes, they are indeed. <laughs> hey, he's going to fly back to the base eventually. It'll be back soon. So somehow Vitality get away with murder there. They get the bot tower. They're also going to get a kill and convert that into a herald to unlock mid. One of the weaknesses of Vitality's comp, you could argue, is sieging against an Azir is going to be very difficult, but by securing this herald, it makes it that much easier to unlock that mid tower and give you more access into the enemy jungle. True. I was going to go down and we'll see how that play sets up here for Vitality because already a chip off the mid tower, but one charge won't do it. It has to be everyone from Vitality moving in. But for now, will it mean anything towards Dragon? Because that's going to be started by MDK. First one went to Vitality, but you can see, due to the Herald play, Vitality are nowhere near. Resets came through, and it does mean that MDK are able to trade neutral objectives, even though Vitality want to come late to the show. One to one in Dragons. Alvaro, Kiki. he is keen to engage. Um, some of them I agree with more than others. Well. That one being all right. But definitely on the dangerous end as Vitality make their way back out onto the map. They now have control over the river, trying to clear out the vision that MDK set oh, up. Bit of a lure. Hilly, really playing on the edge there, gets away to safety. Photon pushing, being pushed in bot. Let's see what Vitio buys. Going back to base. Looks like he's going to work towards either the Crypt Bloom or the uh, Void Staff. I imagine oh, yeah. the Crypt Bloom. Just because you get that extra bit of CDR, always valuable. Hilly again, could be into danger here. Might need to save Photon. Fresco, he's not in range ulti. of the E. As you said, El Yoya going to park his own as Alvaro comes in for the flash, but Hilly knocked up in the end. Quickness gets him out. That three members of MDK bot. Now you can see Video just moves to the top side. He's like, okay, with that full commit, with a couple of things burnt, we're just going to make this trade top. Hey, he's even giving you the thumbs up. Right on, Hysterix. Oh, that is good read yeah, on the map. Man. Vitality have control. They're actually not going to use the Herald in mid. They see an opportunity top. Maybe they can even crash this into the tier two. Mirwin will be in a position to contest, but we think back to that previous play. Photon did end up losing his flash. So did Alvaro. Oh. Okay, we're going mid oh, anyway. Oh, I like this. They, we've been seeing this more just in the previous series. We saw them make this play work. Can they do it again? Or is it too far away? Maybe it sets up a Herald regardless. Donk, 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 donk. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, that Close Herald is not making it. I just learned though, thanks to that Knight's nice interaction, I learned that Daglas has attached the Knight's Vow to Video. Nothing about Kazi this game. We already talked up this mid laner. Video is set up to succeed. So again, I guess that's how they've been playing. A lot of the skirmishes we've been seeing, very smart itemization here from Daglas in his mid, knowing of what's going to come next. Now, speaking of coming next, Tarot is going to be taken the bot side. So this is the first Tarot of the game for MDK. It's a close one. The it gold is. is practically dead even. Again. You, you can look at the bottom of your screens and there's slight gold disparity. I will say, I think the reason why Friskawi has 550G gold bounty is because he was 0-1 and then he got four kills yeah. while also having a 20 CS lead over VTO. Okay. And so the 20 CS lead is causing that goal difference that you see between them, but that's resulting in a 550 gold bounty <laughs> versus a 151. True. So, we're talking about prime time poultry. That right there. Oh, yeah, that is poultry this time. <laughs> True. You have a bird on your team and you have a cow, yeah. 
trying to be clever with my animal references. Obviously, I, can, I didn't do I enough book reading as like a uh -huh. two-year-old. Yep. You know, the cow says quack was kind of where I went to when I was two, three. So you have to excuse me for the time being. <laughs> what? I just didn't learn. <laughs> I didn't learn the proper, you know. It took me, I, had, I was 18 when I learned the sound a cow makes. I see. It's from when I finally went outside, you see. <laughs> yeah. So Boy. much is now all coming together. Oh, <laughs> Too many years of Maple Story mixed in with, you know, 10 years of being in gold in League of Legends. It's ulti for ulti. That's what I'm expecting. Frescaui finally brings it out, but that's the third turret shot. Video forces the flash to you now hovers. We're getting spicy in River because Alvaro's up next. Destiny as well. They come in and blink of a moment. It's true shot barrage almost, but it is a shutdown over to Photon. Well, now re engage. Paranoia is going to be used as quickness as well. Double ulti out, but remember that paranoia was to disengage. So Matt Coy want to be out of there. A flash from Alvaro in front of the Baron. Not what you want to see if you're a Mad fan, as now the Baron starts with five Vitality Healthy members. The Baron is started off. MDK still have their jungler. Mewen doesn't have ulti. El Joya doesn't have ulti. What are you going to do? He has Flash and he's got Smite, and maybe that's all he needs. The Baron down to 5k. Okay, video has got to do something here. He's going to steal away the Paranoia in response. Kazi goes out with an Arcane Shift. There's a re-engage. Mac and Storm as well, but the Charm! Wow, the Charm may have saved the play. Super trying to do the same as well. They're off the Baron. Kazi wants something in. Hilly flashes. He's like, yeah, TP? Why, we can. Mewen running for his life. Alvaro is now back on him. But Kazi in a weird position while Super gets a kill over the wall. These anti carries need to cook up a little bit more. But Kazi in a 1v2 makes it harder. Super Kazi? gets flashed on the range. Not there. Frescaui needs to help out. We asked for chaos, and already in game one, it is delivery. I like mean, a rubber boot in a Kazi, large pond. How is Kazi going to get out of this? I don't know, but also like a rubber boot in a large pond. You are sinking, Kazi, as he almost takes out all your... You have to respect it. You have to respect that Kazi played them for a fool for the most part. I mean, what even was that fight that... Well, that's your, your job to break it down. Vitality decided to... I mean, let's start from the beginning. So, just a nice play from Vizio. The scariest thing about this Vitality comp is its ability to collapse. Aljoya is here covering, but he doesn't ult fast enough. The moment he sees the Destiny, it's too late. The side lane is all over Do it four. again! We're back in the action. Oh, I love Steely Dan. Let's go back, Jack. Do it again. Frescaui launched on. He goes golden. He's buying time for this TP. As Mewen comes on in. Video now in harm's way. Spear Rush can't be used in his own sight. And now there's a reset for Mewen. There's also a paranoia that sets up MDK. They're punished. Look how hungry Vitality are. And MDK are just blocking them once more as the charm. Mirwin's top lane Ari right now impressing the boots off all of them. I mean, now this unlocks the Baron for MDK. <laughs> so this is the strength of MDK's comp in responding to the side lane picks. They get two crucial kills. Now can Vitality interrupt? I mean, Hilly has ulti as well. Kazi can't start to poke in. MDK are burning the health bar as well. And they're trying to zone off Alvaro. Ulti's immediately, but this time Baron's going to be taken down. And MDK pick it up. Destiny used by Photon as El Yoya tries to charge him down. Won't let him get out, but with that flash away, space is through. Gold card buys him time. TP on the top of this fight, Super gets the kill. Video's joined on in, he wants to clean up, he gets the shutdown. Yet like the sixth one here, the Feathers now ready to fly out. Super can't get the flash play. A shutdown that goes to Kazi. Who can give the most gold over? Clap, clap, shutdown goes over. Clap, clap, Alvaro running away. Clap, clap, and guess what, Alvaro, you ignite. And there you go, clap, clap. <laughs> that was a crazy series of events. Douglas, in the meantime, is going to get the dragon. They secure the Baron, but four members die. The ultimate, not going to find anyone. He was looking, he was hunting, he was searching for Friskawi, but it's not going to be a kill. Let's watch Where are again. we even going to start this? <laughs> We're back to the top lane. Again, Vitality look to attack the side lane. They're trying to catch Friskawi, but this time with the Nocturne Ultimate and the TP, good Zonyas from Friskawi buys enough time for the rest of his team to join the fray. MDK already being in a position to contest is exactly what they needed to do. Now, the scary thing about doing Baron against an Ezreal is it's not easy. The poke is going to continue to come down. Great three-man ultimate from Kazi. He's very safe on the back line. Photon in a similar position, chipping away at them. And then the TP comes in from the Silas. Turning this into a chaotic brawl. Yeah. Frescawi and Alvaro at this point just need to run. They need to save what they can. Very early flash from Vizio. 
And I'm hoping we get to the point where Hilly, he's gonna do a knockup onto El Yoya. Really clutch player. I believe he does W into R. Oh, we don't get to see it. Okay, Bit of a shame. It's happening again. Wait, Hilly's caught out this time. Paranoia gonna be used. They're baiting it in. Fresco, he flies, but Super gets the kill. And remember, even though we dance around topside, for quite a while. Baron is still there for the next minute for MDK. It's a negative Baron power play, but with that pick onto Hilly, let's see if Mad can pick up the pieces, correct themselves a bit, and start pushing in some of these side now, I will say, like, people are going to look at this game and say, don't think, like, this is a messy game, like, it's low quality, but the, the nature of the comps make it very pick-orientated, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's all about who can get that collapse first, making these games very back and forth, because you'll see situations where Vitality are in a pos better position to get the picks, and it all comes down to the ultimates from Twisted Fate Nocturne, the TP usage from the Silas and the Ari, along with the fact that Silas can steal Nocturne's ultimate away as well. Where is the Rakan? Where is the Alistair? We're never really getting... Oh. Oh. Frescao, he dead? Again, another collapse! Again, again another, you're right. I mean, again, it's just all about the picks. Frescao's gonna get Golden a second time. He just picked up Zonia's. There's a Magnus Storm, but Frescao, flashes away. The cow sends up the Barnyard for a second time. As now with the quickness, Hilly into the back line. Still gets the knockup. Video's there for the flame. Gets another shutdown. The chain lets get another one too! The setup from Hilly's beautiful. The knockdown from Vitality, perfect. And Video on Silas is unchained. Someone must put this guy back in prison because he's an outlaw on the run. A clean ace for Vitality, and that may very well just be the game. They have the Nexus in their eyes. They've got minions at their back. They're looking to take the first. In what is a 32 kill game in 26 minutes. I tell you what, we've gone from top lane and doing that dance once again to now running through mid and ending off Vitality in 26 minutes. When you want to play with blood, you better be sure to be ready for Vitality's level. Game one is theirs. Such a fun game to watch. Both compositions very much driven around countering the picks that either side are trying to find on side lanes. A lot of scrapping, a lot of skirmishing that ended up turning into really big fights with a lot of skill expression. Wow, what, that was a super fun, like, I don't think we've really saw many fights in mid. Yeah. They were always in top lane or, or whatever. Super great game. I mean, it was great. It's entertaining and hopefully for a sign of things to come. Vitality lead the series 1-0, to zero, but when we return, find out if Matt had that kind of skill expression in them once again. Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Yummy. Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. Crazy off meta pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. What this? Ah! I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. 